let's talk about a new chapter called major landforms of the earth so earth is a planet right it has many continents many countries and many states but the earth undergoes changes due to action of various forces and these forces can be of two types that is internal forces and external forces let's talk about internal forces first internal forces are acting within the earth that means inside of the earth these forces are acting from inside of the earth within the earth and these forces lead to changes in the surface of the earth so internal forces act from within the surface of the earth which leads to sudden changes in the earth so the inner crust of the earth crust of the earth is inside parts of the earth so those crust of the earth is divided into several pieces known as plates so the inner parts of the earth the crust of the earth is divided into many parts called plates so this crust of the earth which is divided into plates it floats over the liquid molten rock rock particles everybody know right they are like stones but if this rock is present in a dissolved form liquid molten form then these plates float over the liquid molten rock which lies below the crust core of the earth heats the molten magma when i talk about magma what does magma mean magma is nothing but the molten matter within the surface of the earth so like when mold volcanoes erupt there is a liquid material which is semi solid in consistency and semi liquid not completely diluted it is but still in liquid in consistency so this molten magma rises upwards and when heated it spreads cools and then sinks again so this molten magma which is like the material of the lava so this molten magma rises upwards when heated and it spreads so you know volcano when it erupts it rises upwards and spreads right and later it cools down and hardens again same way is the case with molten magma so this constant rising and sinking of this liquid material keeps pushing the plates that rest on it on the crust of the earth we have plates right which is which are floating over the liquid molten rock because of this rising and sinking wave like movement of the magma the plates which are resting on the molten magma keep moving so now we have understood right on the earth inside we have crust so crust is divided into smaller things called plates plates are floating over a liquid molten rock so inside the molten rock there is core of the earth which is the innermost part of the earth this innermost part of the earth gets heated spreads up so when this molten magma is spreading obviously the plates which are resting on it also spreads so and then the plates are also constantly moving with the movement of the molten magma and this movement of the plates is known as plate tectonics plate tectonics is the movement of the plates so this plate tectonics that is the movement of the plates results in formation of mountains and valleys on the surface of the earth so the moving plates are responsible for formation of mountains and valleys on the surface of the earth so in this image students you are able to see the internal forces of the earth this is the land surface of the earth inside we have crust which is divided into the plates and then the last innermost thing is the core of the earth and between we have molten rock which is in a fluid like consistency next students let's talk about the external forces of the earth so external process is nothing but the continuous wearing down and rebuilding of the land surface due to some processes like for example soil erosion soil erosion is the process of washing away of upper layers of the soil right and again if due to some reasons if we are planting more trees again the land surface again the soil builds up right because the roots of the trees firmly hold the soil so this is external force external process is the continuous wearing down and rebuilding of the land surface so this process of wearing away of the earth surface is known as erosion erosion is nothing but wearing off of the upper layers of the earth surface the surface is being lowered by the process of erosion the process of erosion decreases the surface wears off the surface and then rebuilt of the surface is done by the process of deposition if something comes and gets deposited again the surface is rebuilt right these processes of erosion and then again deposition are carried out by running water ice 
and wind so depending on the elevation and slope of the land some cities are situated on a hills right so their landform is separate their elevation is separate and town cities which are on the ground surface their elevation and slope is different hill stations elevation is different then some places are situated over the mountains their elevation is different so depending or basing on the elevation and slope the landforms are classified as mountains plateaus and plains so in this image students you are seeing the external force that is erosion of the land surface and again deposition of the land surface so lowering of the surface is erosion again rebuilding is deposition next let's study of different types of landforms so on the basis of the elevation and slope how they are located they are three types of landforms they are known as mountain plateaus and plains so in this image students you can see at a great height are located the mountains then plains are located at the ground level right and plateaus are also located at a little bit height over the surface of the earth let's talk about mountains mountain is nothing but any natural elevation of the earth surface so if there is any elevation or anything above the earth surface it is known as the mountain so mountains have a small summit and a broad base that is always the base of the mountain is broad and the top part is always narrow whereas mountains are always at a greater height than the surrounding area so how much height how much higher than the surrounding areas sometimes they are even higher than the clouds that means even clouds are only at a great distance from the surface of the earth right so these mountains are sometimes higher than even the clouds and as we go up the mountains the climate becomes colder so always so always as the altitude increases temperature decreases so as we go high the climate becomes colder some mountains almost water is in a frozen state and always it will be in a frozen state because of colder climates over the lower temperatures so they are permanently frozen rivers of the ice and these permanently frozen rivers of ice are known as the glaciers sometimes mountains are not only above the earth surface level they are even below the sea inside deep and because of so much colder climates in these mountains very less people live in the mountain areas so because the climate is always colder not many people live there because human bodies cannot tolerate such extreme colder climate so very less people live in the mountain areas So in this image you are able to see Himalayan mountain range it is at a height above the earth surface it is covered with ice rivers so this is known as the glaciers there are three types of mountains fold mountains block mountains and volcanic mountains so these fold mountains are formed by the upliftment that is lifting up and folding of the land mass that is if land is lifted up and being folded inside then fold type of mountains form this happens due to lateral compression by the internal forces inside the earth forces will be there right so these forces lead compression land and form the fold mountains so imagine if we have two plates two plastic plates if they move towards each other and fold so the place where these and get fold is known as the fold fold method so the point where these two folds meet that point either gets folded or crumpled and then forms as a mountain so the earth's layers are known as the earth's crust right so this layers of earth's crust come up get lifted and fold into each other due to the internal forces and then the result in the formation of fold mountains and examples of such mountains are himalayas and alps